It is said of the English that their own worst enemy is themselves. Here, at our office above the Bakers, we had a visitor who agreed. If Margaret Thatcher knew what was going on in British industry today, she'd leave the country. The government are involved in getting people that, are, that can fit in a slot. Now, I don't fit in that slot. Um, there's no way I can fit in the slot because of lack of education. It's, how can you put it? Um, if you came to me and said I had an idea which would revolutionize the security field, which would save lives, be very, very low cost, I would tend to think that you were a nutter. So I understand that the upper apprehension of people looking this way at me. But I would do you the courtesy of listening to me. Um, which people aren't doing now, you know. Um, how can you put it? If somebody had just bloody listen, you know. Everybody's got all the answers. I haven't got all the answers. I don't even know all the bloody questions. But I've got one answer, which makes English jobs, English money, and it saves lives worldwide. Across at the lard factory, the inventor's problems are well understood by Alex Smith. He'll never get started. There's so many snags. Completely bureaucracy. He's got to deal with bank managers, he's got to deal with loans, he's got to deal with governments, and I've said before, all the red tape is increasing and increasing, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes convinced with more bureaucracy than some of the East, Europe, East European countries today. I'm positive of this. Hello, I've got the bank figures, Robin. They're not so good. We're only 12,000 in credit, 13,000 in credit in the whole group. I'm, I'm very proud of this factory because this was the basis for acquiring all the other factories, much larger. I bought people out with far more money than me. All I have done, really, is save six full-time managing director's salaries in six large motor cars. So you translate that into money, that is, that is the money I make without even replacing them by one office boy. We're on a much smaller basis now than ever we've been. And my turnover at the present time is around about eight million. And I can see it going down to um, two or three millions this year. And he's wondering whether there's any possibility of us selling. It says a lot of the Italians ask for it, it's at chip shots and so on. Yes, we'll send him some samples, that's the best thing. Uh, we could do a cooking fat, deodorized dripping, and the lard. Whilst we're lard refiners, most of our money is made in refining salvage materials, salvage butter, salvage oils. Uh, it's a profitable factory, but two or three times I've almost closed it down because we can never see more than a month ahead. Uh, your, yours is down. Yours is down from uh, 19,000 to six. But, but I, 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 have you given me any, you've not given me any instructions on, on how to watch his accounts. It, it, it's supposed to be paying out when he gets money in.
starting with it is... Oh. <laughs> I like wood stock. Well, this settlement is, they've got this Nazi back in France already, and they've uh, charged him, so they haven't wasted any time, have they? Oh, no. If he is convicted, he'll escape execution. He's 69 now, and he, he's quoted as saying, I'm now in death's waiting room, and I don't think it's before time. I mean, I'm not normally a vindictive person, but for people of, like that... Oh, right. It's just sick, doesn't it? You, you can't say that uh, his death would be any more acceptable or justified than all the people he killed. Oh, yes, but, I know. you know, let them um, lock him away for the remainder of his natural, but... Uh... <laughs> you can hardly see him sitting there in a cell full of remorse and, and, and misery, can oh, you? Because no, he's obviously no. got no conscience whatsoever. Oh, well, I mean, you publish his memoirs, it's won't you? <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I make a fortune. It's, uh, oh, it's quite, quite nauseating sort of thing to read. Of course, it wouldn't have happened yeah. if the South American countries had uh, oh, got them out yes. quickly after the war. Yeah. And well, I mean, they're still, they're still doing the same sort of thing that the Nazis did in the war, aren't they? Concentration they camps, torture and uh, right. and killings. So, um, it's not surprising that they're sympathetic. Oh, yes, they seem yeah. to be right. Yes. And, and what's more, we lend them money to do it, don't we? <laughs> it's true. Half the... Yes. If, if, if we called in all the loans... Uh, well, Britain and Europe called in all the loans that they had to South American dictatorships. The dictatorships would, would crumble overnight. Why can't they? Why can't they bring them down that way? It's no good standing up in the United Nations and saying oh, it's else disgraceful. Oh, somebody else would lend them the money if we didn't. You know, it's the usual thing. Oh, that's supposed to. So. Somebody else had some of the arms as we did. You find anything edifying in there? This man Bardi. Well, you can't go, you can't be executing a man of 69 after so many years. <coughs> oh, you're on the clinic for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Have to know today. I mean, it's not a thing you hear about the French mm -hmm. an awful lot, is it? That side of their uh, character. Well, the French look after themselves, always have them. Uh, Would you like to be in a lifeboat with a lot of Frenchmen? <laughs> well, <laughs> a good Frenchman and bad Frenchman. They don't, they don't they? even queue up in, in an orderly manner for anything. No, they're selfish of the French, they look after themselves. But having said that, I think Britain has its traditions that are coveted by the whole of the world. And this is why it seems so unfortunate that we have to disband county regiments. Five BC oh, before yes. breakfast yeah. at Gallipoli, mm -hmm. the Lancashire Fusiliers disbanded. Yes, One would have thought it would be at least useful to keep them at company strength, keep the name, because this tradition is valuable. monarchy binds us together. I mean, no matter how, what political views we hold, we can all rally around the Queen. I would argue that the Queen and Prince Philip are net earners for mm. Great Britain Limited. Yes. Some of the hangers-on shouldn't be there, but if we have a pyramid, we've got to have the base of the pyramid. Fate may sometimes seem unkind, though the skies are grey. Every cloud is silver line, sorrows fade away. Hearts may weep to joy or pain. Do you think that the picture of the, uh, the British man, the Englishman, uh, is like it always was, or do you think it's, it's changing? The progressives want it to change, and probably supported by the media. But the 25-year-olds these days are more patriotic than the 45-year-olds. When it comes to the situation, we're there. No, we're great because we have unity and because we believe in fair play. The country play, we play cricket. This is what it's all about. In the, uh, metaphorically, the country plays cricket. 
<laughs> what can we do for you? Well, uh, I'm on job creation scheme at the moment, uh, and I'm really concerned at the sort of, you know, the temporary aspect of the job. Uh, I want a proper job. What have you done in the past? What sort of experience have you got? Well, I've been in the Merchant Navy for a number of years. Um, I've had several, you know, various jobs. I've trained as a bricklayer at the skill centre. Have you? And I've worked mainly in the building industry since then. Would you be interested in another training course? Well, I'm certainly willing to consider it, yes. What, what, what is uh, on offer at the moment? Uh, that's a good question. There's a fair range. If I, if I trained in another trade, would I not then be in more or less the same position as I am now? When you've been to the skill centre, you get a lot of sort of uh, hassle from the chaps who have served their time in the conventional way. People say, well, you know about this proud to be British, like, but like at the moment with all the unemployment sales it is, I know he's very proud to be British mm. already, <laughs> putting it bluntly. Well, that's well, how I, I think. I don't, I don't know, I think nobody, you, you no, know. Nobody actually <coughs> uh, goes out of the way and says, yeah, I'm British, I'm on the door, would they? No. If you're born working class, you will always be really working class. You'll be regarded as working class yes. by, by, say, middle class people and upper class mm. people who have got plenty of money, who have inherited the money. If you, if you win the pools, if you invest the money and you become a millionaire, you'll never actually be regarded as being upper class. Upper class you'll yeah. always be basically working class. Mm -hmm. I think you could go to a like, middle class. You might have the same sort of house, the same That's amount of money in yeah. the bank, oh, yeah. drive the same car, but you're not the same as them. Try because the they have, haven't gone, you haven't gone to the same, same schools, schools as them. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's yeah. not your heritage to be there. They feel that you shouldn't be there. They all look down on us, really. It's pathetic. Do they, don't they? Uh, yeah, I think I think there's more than three classes now, though. I think that we're getting a lot of in-between type classes. I think now you've got the extreme rich, the, but you're basic rich. You're middle class, you lower class, and you're extreme lower class now. I think the whole range is stretching. Right, it doesn't really. matter what we, you we are, all, really. You're yeah. all in the same boat. But, but, we, yeah, but we haven't got the money, though, have we? We all try to better ourselves. We're trying to better ourselves. We're trying to better ourselves, yeah, because... Well, I think if you go out to a, to a, to a restaurant and, and you're, you're sitting down there to a meal and you, you see that you're surrounded by people who are obviously far more well-off than you are, middle class types, yeah. upper middle class, whatever. So you're on your best behaviour. You're trying to... You're trying to put yourself forward as, as best you can. You not you don't want to make a bad impression. That really is a kind of inverse snobbery, isn't it? Oh, well, it is. You yeah. try not to not to appear to be beneath well, these in people. A, in a so way, in a way, we're worse, really, aren't we? They're acting how they would every day. Mm. They would perhaps even go for a meal where we might go for a meal once every six months in that kind of place. <laughs> well, they once every two years, everybody, 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 everybody has they go for once really. or twice a week. I mean. They do that naturally. So really, in a way, we're worse. A man lucky enough to be working this week, but with other things on his mind, is bricklayer Gordon Clough. Right then, we've got the music now, which is Caprice Brass Fur. Of course, we know the finals are held at the Albert Hall this time in London, so that's a little bit of an incentive. Of course, there's only two bands qualified this time, so we've got to try a little bit harder. How many of you have had a look at it since you've got the copies? One, two, three. Right, anyway, let's have a, let's have a go from the beginning, shall we? Let's see what happens. For starters, I think we've got to take notice of what he tells us right at the beginning, and it's got to be bright and rhythmic. Let's have another bass, shall we, from the beginning. Ah, 
right, after before letter A, the eighth bar. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you can bloody believe it or not. You were saying we should have gone with with it, Germany. Yeah, bloody two first bug. No. Well, I'm not having that. No, no, I'm not, I'm not having that. No, no, I'm not. Who's the wealthiest? People well, I'm not pulling at all. They were right, the Germans, when, when they went in, away they from, didn't come into us. They were right. Yes. They, they were firmly convinced you are getting away from the point I put to you. Stupid to her. Me? Yeah, yeah. Does it mean... I was going to sunk up and that place to fight for you. You wouldn't be able for me. You think that's your guilt, Jews? People like me. You think that's all I thought, Jews, eh? I didn't agree with that. I'd consider myself a patriot, yeah. I'd uh, joined up with the army. But I'm not, uh... You were called up. I wasn't called up, but I'm not one of these that go banging the drummer out. I'm not anti-monarchy. There's one or two of them I would like to say. Just brushed it back round a bit, but other than that, I'm not anti-monarchy at all. Why should you fight for a country that's prepared to treat you like rubbish, give you pathetic... Well, right, we'll just talk about it in the wages sense. They give you bad wages and they like you to keep the country running, but they only keep it running for the upper classes. I mean, the working class, that's all they seem to be. Although the working class seems to have a more glorified opinion of themselves now. That's all they are, basically. Something to keep the country running so that the people in power can keep it. They haven't earned a lot of it. I mean, it goes back years and years, doesn't it? I mean, that young chap that's supposed to own half of London, well, he's... Great granddad must have been like a like a Dick Turpin, weren't he? Bit of a thief, like to get all that. But he, he hasn't he hasn't earned it. Somebody must have given him. It's just that there's some people who've got money and there's some people who haven't got money. The people who haven't tend to want more, and the people who have it always fight to keep it. Which to me is stupid, that's just a vicious circle. Privilege of money only annoys me because I haven't got any. I'd love to have some of this privilege, but I haven't got any. But it's no good worrying about it, is it? Now I can't see how she can earn all this money that people give her at all. Queen's all right. I quite like the Queen. She's all right. But uh, some of them I'm, I'm not so fond of. The Queen is nothing at all. She's just a figurehead. So, so like a, a tourist attraction like Blackpool Tower, that's all she is. They should p just pay enough money to keep her going, but they don't. They give her enough money to keep Buckingham Palace and uh, all these fancy homes that she doesn't need and she doesn't use. But to me, she's just a symbol of, uh, I don't know how sick this country is, really. I mean, they can pay all this money for Queen, who does nothing, I mean. Communism's just the same as them that has and them that hasn't. So whichever system you use, it's always the same. There's them that has and them that hasn't. And we haven't. They have. <laughs> <laughs> We're just unlucky. But that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? It's just... Well, we're going to say something there a little naughty, I better not. Just depends which side of the bed you're born on, doesn't it? Really. I mean, if my dad had been Prince Philip, I'd have been Prince Jack, wouldn't I? <laughs> wouldn't I? Um, well, I might have already died, Anna. Oh, you never know. See? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I'd hate to think that I lived in any sort of society where it was them and us. I think in Britain it's more or less all us. I love our royal family. I think our royal family are the best public relations officers that any country could have. I like to be able to say, yes, I'm a conservative. But I still like to be friendly with the, the socialist that lives next door. I'm in, so I'm very fishy. I know, well, that's what I thought. Like, What's the oven on the pot, then? Well, we were going to make some beanies well. But, uh, I would consider myself to be middle class. We like to think of ourselves as a more or less classless society. But it's not true. If somebody has to rule, and somebody has to be ruled. Are you going to take your coat off, Polly? I think you ought to, it's a bit warm in here. You can put it over the hoover and then you can switch it on when the ice cream man comes. I have to work. I go to work because we need the money. We need the, the things that the money buys. Probably if I didn't live 
in my sort of class structure, I wouldn't. And I think I'm realistic enough to realise that. But I like what the money buys me. Pony trekking archery, canoeing, rifle shooting, abseiling and motorbike riding over. That one was £89 for a week. But if you go on that, there's no, um, you know, we can't afford to protect you. So well, but you well, go on that and then go... Um, with you? With you as well. You know, it's going to cost... Well, where are you going this year? Well, we haven't, we haven't decided yet, really. Well, we haven't really uh, discussed it, have we? No. Well, do you fancy? Do you fancy another villa? Or do you want to go in a hotel again? I don't want to go in a hotel. Well, it's either a villa. Or stopping at home? No, I'm not stopping at all. I'm not working 12 months a year, I'm stopping at all. Like to go and give it for somebody else. Why should people who's got the money think that they can have other people work for them to clean for them and iron for them and cook for them? I mean, they say there's not a lot of poor people now, but I think there's a hell of a lot of poor people and they're really struggling, you know, to make a decent living. And there's a lot of top drawer people. I mean, they've that much money, they don't know what to do with You know, they don't know where to go and spend it what to do with it. We always say, you know, people don't really live like that day to day, but they do. You know, there's still people that have still servants. Way of living, isn't there? Yeah. There's still people that can afford to have servants. Yeah, domestic help. I mean, how many, yeah. what we really class as working class sometimes, have domestic helps. It must be a lovely feeling, you know, just go home and say, somebody's done all my ironing and all this, but this is what's happening. Because these people would have made it big in our language they can employ somebody to go and do their cleaning. Which in one, in one respect, class distinction that way is a good thing, isn't it? In that way, they, I mean, they're working for the money, they've, they've got this to it to that kind of level where they can afford to employ someone. All right, if they're on the door, they're glad yeah. of the job. Anybody's, yeah. gla anybody's glad of the job whether they're on the door or not now. They're privileged people. And they can do, they can they can afford they can to do it. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that brings you back to the same point, doesn't it? Money talks a lot. You can you can do anything you want with money, can't you? Like Prince Charles, he's getting paid. He's no job. He's, do you believe that they should have the money, what they're allowed? I don't think they should, they should be allowed as much as, as they get. I think they should be allowed it. I think they earn it. When they're it. so, so much... They earn it. You Your think they earn it? Yeah. 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 So you, you think like like Prince Charles, they, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to, kind of a name to give him and what kind of job he wants. You think they he's right having all job. that money here? Well, they're, they're saying he hasn't. They're saying he hasn't, he hasn't got a job as such. Who's saying that he hasn't got it? He's been in the papers. But he hasn't got it. He's been in the uh, Navy. Oh, yeah, he's been in the Navy. What's he How would you, like, I have to keep saying it ever so often, Andre, you have to go to such a place. Andre, you have to go to such a place. Yeah, I know, I know Andre, you, you have to go to open such a thing. Because I wouldn't like to have to be um, at the theatre one night, there the following morning, an hospital opening this and opening that. It's a hectic life, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. But um, I don't think he should have as much money as he does for that. Who, Prince Charles? Yeah. He's the next king. Yeah. All right. Well, that's just my point of view on that. I think it's wonderful. And I think if I lived in London, I mean, I don't think we get to see the Queen enough. I think if I lived in London, I think I would be out on the streets, just like anybody else watching. Because when she came to Darwin, I mean, we, we were all allowed out, we were all stood in the street, and it's really wonderful to see her. You know, she's like, I don't know, it's like a fairy queen, isn't it? Like a, like a, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's somebody really, what really wonderful. exists, really. Yeah. Somebody all in your imagination, what's yeah. happening in true life. never be the same. Yeah, and it's a damned hard job to do. I love England, and I, that's unequivocal. I love England. I think it's a marvellous land, and I think that because I've lived abroad, and the longer I live, the more I realise how uh, fortunate we are and uh, what a wonderful land we have. Every inch I love it. Love it. I wouldn't leave it for Auntie in China. Although I want to visit America, 
think England's terrific. What do I like about it? Oh, everything. Look at that view. It's frozen north, but I still like it. I've talked to people that have uh, come from Czechoslovakia. My son, very friendly with a young man, that his parents have escaped with what they stood up in. And she always used to say, how, how beautiful this country. You could argue, you could do what you liked. And she said, and they don't realise in her country you couldn't do that. I've heard a lot of people saying Britain is the best country in the world and uh, I think it's, it's true that because I think this is the only country where you get true democracy. You've got freedom of speech. You've got so many, you know, nice things in this country. I think before I came to England, I used to think, oh, when, I, when I'll go in England, like people used to say, in England, you know, um, when you go, uh, most of uh, English people, they wouldn't like to talk to you, just because of your colour. But uh, when I came myself, you know, I, I found things different. I think it depends on uh, person concerned, really, uh, different personality. It is the way you, you approach uh, an Englishman. They're a bit too res reserved, I think. They must try a little bit. Of, uh, uh, it's, it's a matter of give and take. They must accept, you know, in, in Britain we've got a multiracial society. And there are a lot of colored people living here for ages now, and still some English people, you know, they don't accept them, you know. I think they must try a little bit, you know. Why not, you know, we, we're a member of this community, so why don't we all live, you know, a friendly way, which is better for everyone, really. Hey, you, did you hear?